Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, my name is Mohammed Isa. I'm from Saskatchewan. I'm a Native American, Cree. Are we loud enough? From Pasco First Nations. And I've been Muslim for about five years now. Um, I grew up with a single mother. I never really had any uh, direction in my life. And when I was about nine years old, I was apprehended by the government and I was put in, in foster care. And um, foster, the, the foster homes were never really, well, let's just say they weren't happy places. So I would run away and I would be apprehended and then I would be put in another foster home. And this went on until I was about 13 and then I started going to boys' homes and eventually to the correctional facility and just this constant cycle of in and out of foster homes, in and out of boys' homes, in and out of institutions. So in 2005, I found myself in prison doing three years for selling drugs. And I remember when I was there thinking that if there's a hell, then I imagine that this place must be across the street from hell because the feeling was so gloomy and so dark and I, I remember feeling that even the guards seemed like criminals. Everybody just seemed so so shady. So I started thinking about the purpose of life. What is my purpose in life? You know, why am I here and why do I continue to come back to these places and how can I make sure that I never ever have to come here again? So I started thinking about, you know, who is my who's my God and who is my my creator and what is my purpose. So the first thing that came to my mind was Christianity because my mother was a Protestant and uh, I was in several different foster homes. I was in a Catholic foster home. I was in a uh, Jehovah's Witness um, evangelical. So I, I got several different tastes of Christianity but I did not know what kind of Christian I was really because I, I never really practiced. So. I used to go to the, the chapel. This was my kind of escape from the gloomy atmosphere of, of prison. So I would go to the chapel and I would, I would just sit there and contemplate. And I, I spoke to the chaplain and I said, I'm a Christian, but I don't really know what kind of Christian I am. Can you please tell me uh, what is the right, which one is the right one? And she said, whatever feels right for you, whatever one feels right for you. So basically they can't really give dawah in prison, so you kind of got to kind of find your own way. So I said, okay, I'm going to read the Bible. So I went to the library to read the Bible, and I seen the New International Version, the New King James Version, the New Living Bible, the New, uh, the new Contemporary Version. So again, I... I was a little bit confused because I didn't know which one to start reading. So I went back to the chaplain and I said, I want to read the Bible, but I don't know which one I should, I should read. And she said, again, whatever one feels right for you. So I, um, I, I, I you know, you're in jail, you got nothing but time on your hands. So I, I got a few Bibles. I got three Bibles and I took them back to my cell and I just wanted to compare them and contrast them and see what is the difference, you know. So I would read one scripture and then I would read the same scripture and read the same scripture to see how it, how it changed. And I realized that no two of them were the same. They were completely, completely different. And I noticed, you know, I would read a scripture and there'd be a little A or a little B and you go down to the footnotes and it would say, omit this or add this. And I remember reading in the back of the Bible in Revelations, it says anybody who adds anything to this or anybody who takes anything from this, that God will uh, give them the plagues described in this book. So I was thinking, first of all, nobody's allowed to add or take anything, but I'm just going to do what it tells me to do just to see how it changes my understanding of it. And subhanAllah, it, it, uh, it completely would change my, my understanding of what it meant. And I realized that this must be the problem, that somebody keeps taking and adding things and then somebody reads it and gets a different understanding of what it means and then they go off and start their own sect of Christianity. And 
Uh, one particular verse I remember reading was Matthew 19, verse 16, 17, where Jesus comes to, uh, no, a man comes to Jesus and says, good teacher, what good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? And he says, don't call me good. There's only one that's good. If you want to inherit eternal life, then obey the commandments. And we all know the commandments. The first commandment is there's no God but one God. So I was thinking, you know, if these Christians knew that Jesus was saying, don't call me good, there's only one good, then this statement completely negates Christianity. So I, I compared that scripture in the next one to see if it changed a bit. And well, it, it, it changed. It changed just a little bit. Instead of Jesus saying, uh, don't call me good, he says, why do you ask me about what is good? So. I, I got the idea that you know somebody is changing these words and somebody is adding and there must be an original there must be an original Bible there must be one where there's no additions and that is the one that I have to find and that is the one that I'll believe so I used to go to the chapel and these Christian preachers used to come in and preach and question time came and I, I started asking questions first of all I asked um, you know, why, why all the different Bibles and why Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're all, they all tell a contra uh, contradictory story. So he said, well, it's kind of like, you know, if 10 people witness a crime and they all write a statement about the crime, all their statements are going to be different, but they're talking about the same crime. And uh, I said, no, that doesn't really, that doesn't really work with me. I said, you know, Jesus, there's a part in the Bible where Jesus bows down and he prays. I said, was he praying to himself or, or, or was he praying to something greater than himself or what, what's the deal here if he's God? And he said that Jesus was simply giving an example of how to pray. He, he went to the side to show the disciples how to pray and he was bowing down and prostrating. And I said, then if that's the example of how to pray, then why are we standing up and clapping our hands and everything if we should be praying like Jesus? And, you know, I asked a few, a few other questions. I just couldn't wrap my mind around worshiping Jesus. And, and as I read the Bible, I, I, I specifically paid attention to that. And, and I wanted to find somewhere where Jesus says, you know, I am God, worship me, or anything. And I could not, not find anything like that. Instead, he always says, I can of my own self do nothing. Uh, it is the God in heaven who does everything. Um, you know, he, he, uh, whenever he healed the leper, he, he gave all the glory to Allah. So I couldn't find this. And finally, I asked the, the preacher, I said, where's the original Bible? Where's the one that is unchanged? And he said, the original doesn't exist. The closest we have to the original is the Dead Sea Scrolls. And that is still yet another translation of the original. And I said, if we don't have the original, and this is a translation, I said, then how can you tell us that this is the word of God? How can you tell us, follow the word of God? If it was the original book where there was nothing changed, nothing added, then you can say it's the, it's the, it's the word of God. But if you tell us it's the word of God, then you're lying to us. And at that, he... He, uh, well, he got a little upset with me. He asked me to leave the uh, congregation. He called the guards. He said that I was disrupting the congregation. So the guards came and got me, and they escorted me back to my cell. And I remember on the way back to my cell, they were saying, uh, you must be a really bad guy. And I said, why? They said, because you're in jail, and you're getting kicked out of church. And I said, well, that's how it is. You know, in Christianity, you can't really ask any questions. You can't ask how, how three equals one. You know, if, as soon as you ask questions, then you're, you know, you're not a believer. So after that, it kind of wiped off my idea of Christianity. But I still had this idea that Jesus was God. I, I didn't really have any other, anything else. Although I couldn't prove it, I still thought that that was the reality. So I used to go to the chapel uh, just, to, just to get away from the gloomy atmosphere. And I seen some Muslims. There was a little room next to 
the chapel, and they were bowing down and they were praying. And I knew these guys. One of them, he had a, a dragon tattoo on his arm, like wrapped right around his arm. The other guy had a big dragon on his back. And you know, in the Bible, anytime it describes the devil, it either describes him as a, as a snake or, or, or a dragon or something. So I thought maybe these guys are praying to the devil. Maybe they're, they're either praying to Jesus or they're praying to the devil, or one of the two. So I have to find out. So I went and asked them. Uh, well, I waited till they were done, of course. And I went and asked them. And I said, who are, you, who are you bound down to? And they said, we're bound down to Allah. And I said, who is Allah? He said, Allah is the creator, the creator of the heavens and the earth. There's no God but Allah. And I was thinking, okay, what does Allah say about Jesus? So I asked them, what does Allah say about Jesus? And subhanAllah, they told me, everything about Jesus, that Jesus healed the leper, Jesus raised the dead, uh, Jesus spoke as a baby in the cradle. Um, he did many, many miracles. He was born of a virgin. And they said, one thing that really clicked with me, they said, if anybody is more worthy of being called son of God because of their miraculous birth, it would be Adam. Because Adam had no mother, no father, yet he was created by Allah. Whereas Jesus was, he had a mother but no father. So Adam would be more worthy of being called son of God if a miraculous birth meant son of God. So I was, I was very shocked at, these, at the knowledge that these brothers had because, you know, they answered my questions in a logical way. And, and I've, I've been asking the chaplains and asking the, the Christian preachers questions and they, they always kind of beat around. They couldn't answer my questions. So these guys... They really had some knowledge. To me, these guys were really intelligent. And I asked them, I said, where did you learn this from? And they said, the Quran. And I said, what is the Quran? They said, the Quran is the word of God. The Quran is pure, not one letter, not one dot has changed from it, and it will remain pure until the day of judgment. So at hearing this, a light kind of went off in my head because I was already thinking of an original Bible that hadn't been changed. And here they're telling me that there's a Quran. So naturally, I had, to, I had to have one. So I asked if I could have one, and they said, sure. So later on that night, I went to my cell, and the brother came by with a, an English translation of the Quran. And so I, I, I went through the, the index, and I found sort of Miriam, because I really wanted to find out who Jesus was and what it said about Jesus. So I read Surah Miriam, and I think maybe halfway through that surah, I, I I must have become a believer because I started, I started crying and I started, you know, this feeling of happiness came into my heart and at the same time this feeling of fear of not knowing what, what I'm supposed to do or what is my responsibility or what's going to happen with my life now. But I, at the same time, I was happy because I really felt, even though it was an English translation, I really felt when I was reading it that Allah was speaking directly to me and it made sense to my reasoning. So. I, the next day, I went to meet the brothers and I prayed with them, prayed with Salat. And I think the next day after that was Friday and a brother used to come in and give the khutbah. So that Friday, I took my, my shahada. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, you know, ever since then, I, you know, I eventually I got out and it, it really changed my life. I mean, Islam is the only thing that can make a human being do a, a complete 360. It, Islam is the only thing. There, there's no other rehabilitation except for Islam. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Jazakal khair for listening to me. Islam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.